What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Jake, and we're talking about computer science yet again. Today, we're talking about compilers. It's the compiler episode. More specifically, we're talking about C compilers. And why are we talking about this? Um, I've had some projects that I've been doing recently, and it's involved transferring some C code that was originally made on Linux to Windows. And the entire process of taking a GCC compiled C program and converting that to a MSVC compiled program on Windows has been interesting and has had some interesting challenges. So I thought we would just take an episode and discuss how that is. This video is more of a rant than a synopsis on the nitty gritty details of how compilers work. Um, so with that being said, I don't feel too terrible with pulling up a chat GPT prompt and just like kind of listing out some high level things about all these different compilers. Top five compilers because there are a lot of them. Um, so forgive me on just blatantly showing some chat jippity, but you know, it's, it's going to be all good. So one of the most common compilers that almost everyone will be familiar with if you've used a Linux machine or if you've done a computer science course in the, in the past is GCC, the GNU C compiler. It's uh, open source, so it has a wide range of support. It has a standard. It has a debugger. It's been around for a long time, very mature. It's portable on, you know, Windows, Mac, Linux. Got that GCC dude. And it has pretty good optimization capabilities. It's the all you can get compiler, open source. Great. Awesome stuff. And it also has a logo. Look at that guy. Holy smokes. We got a we got an egg. We got an egg and a bowl coming out of the egg. <laughs> That's a nice logo. So uh, that, that's pretty sick. We're also going to look at all the logos of these, which is kind of cool. Clang um, is another widely used C compiler, blah, 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 part of the, the um, LLVM, which is LLVM project. It offers excellent performance diagnosis and compatibility with various platforms. And I can tell you that Clang was the default compiler that I used. When I was using Mac OS, I'm not sure. I, I imagine you can get Clang on on Windows or on a Linux machine if you really needed to, but I think it came out of the box with um, my Mac, and I was just so used to seeing those Clang errors when you're like trying to compile multiple C programs, multiple C files into one program. Uh, you get some crazy Clang errors sometimes, and you're like, dude, holy smokes. But their errors are super detailed. Um, which is why they're kind of scary at first, but then you get used to them and it's, and it's all good. And I didn't know this is what the Clang, I did not know this is what the Clang uh, logo was, but it's a freaking dragon, like a Kali Linux dragon. So um, pretty cool, pretty cool Clang, good stuff, good stuff. And the Microsoft C++ compiler is the one that, yes, is the Microsoft Windows compiler of choice most of the time, which is interesting. You know, you would think that Microsoft, why invest in your own compiler when there's all these other ones that, that exist out here? And it's pretty remarkable. I mean, essentially Microsoft's like, hey, we do a lot of coding. We do a lot of software development work and we don't want to, we don't want to trust the open source community or we don't want to like, rely on the open source community. We don't want to rely on third parties when it comes to building the Windows OS, when it comes to building just Microsoft products in general. Uh, they wanted to make their own compiler, so that way when they're making software, uh, they have control over that compiler and what it can do. So when you're making stuff on Windows, I'm pretty sure the Microsoft compiler will optimize your code for running on Windows. Super, super great. You know, I was testing it out, and the the clock ticks that were happening with my Microsoft compiled C program versus my GCC compiled program, same code, same code, compiled differently. The Microsoft Visual C++ was running quicker, faster, and I don't know if that's just because it was like a SIGWIN DLL that was being added to the program, and so maybe it just takes a little bit more instructions to use because it's using some third-party lib but if you're making the code on windows the microsoft visual c++ compiler excellent choice that's when that is the compiler that is used when you're opening up vs code or 
Visual Studio. Uh, and you can like kind of step through in their visual debugger. So every time you're building C++ apps on Windows, you're using Visual Studio. That is the compiler in the back end. And it's also hidden behind a bunch of a bunch of directories. You can eventually dwindle your way down and see the actual, I think it's called, uh, we'll do, it's called cl.exe. Uh, and it's found in your Microsoft Visual Studio folder. If you drill down far enough, you'll find it. Uh, Tiny CC. Also, this is the logo. So very cool, very cool. Tiny VC CC here. You know, this is like what you're going to be using on Arduinos, on any IoT device. It's tiny. Uh, the binary is tiny, as in, so it, it doesn't take up a lot of space. So you can have a compiler that doesn't do as much optimization. A lot of these compilers, when you're running your C code to it, it's going to optimize your code on the back end for you, so that way it runs quicker. TinyCC is lightweight. It is fast, um, and it's designed for embed systems, so it's not going to give you some crazy intense optimization, but it will um, be small enough to fit on small disk, so very cool. And then there's the Intel C compiler. Um, Intel out here making a compiler. I did not even know of this, of this guy's existence until the chat GPT, but apparently it's it's really good for Intel processors. Um, and you can imagine, I guess, if you're in a high-performance scenario and you need that extra computing power, um, that the Intel C compiler might be the choice for you. But the point being, guys, here, we'll, we'll bring it back to my face. I guess the whole point of this video is just to say that, yes, there is the C language, there's the C++ language, and there are standards of which these languages follow. And one of the important reasons for having a standard is so that when I build my application in a C language, I can go on a Linux platform, I can go on a Windows platform, or a Mac, use one of these compilers, and expect some sort of common output. The way that we write C, the way that we write programs, is ultimately interpreted by a compiler, by a linker, and ultimately turned into machine code. So the C code, you know, you're, you're writing code, but it's really getting interpreted and put into ones and zeros. We need to have a standard in place so that way we can, you know, have common functionalities and expect the same output when we, when we write the C code. And having different compilers... It means that we need some standards in place so that way we're on the same page. Uh, and there are multiple C compilers out there. It's been, a, it's been a language that's been out there for a long time. So, I don't know. I hope this gave you insight into how compilers work and how there's multiple of them out there and how Microsoft's M MSVC uh, came to exist. So, yeah, just a little rant about compilers. I think they're cool. Um, peace.